today we will be looking at question um, on exercise one. Um, our first question would be question seven. So we have a problem that the tangents to a parabola giving us y squared equal 4ax at the point meets the x axis at a and the y axis at b. Find the equation of the locus of the midpoint of AB as T varies. So first of all, what do we know? The keywords, tangent, tangent to a parabola. Okay, the point at which um, we have a tangent. What do we also know? It meet the x axis at the point A and it meet the y arrows at the point B. So we have to write out this information. So first, how do we find the equation of the tangent? So the general equation of the tangent is y1 equals m x minus x1. But what's our y1 and what's our x1? So our x1, y1 can be equal to the point at which we have tangency. So we can have that as at squared and 280. Okay. So we then substitute this point into our general equation of the line. So we have y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, which is 80 squared. Now, for us to be sure, the tangent, sorry, the gradient of the curve at this point would be the same as the gradient of our tangent line. So we can find the gradient of this curve and it should be the same as the tangent line. But how do we do that? So we differentiate our function. We have 2y dy dx to be equal to 4a. And then we make dy dx the subject. So we have 4a on 2y. Now, if we cancel 2 out, we'll be left with 2a on y. But we are interested in the gradient at the point P. So we substitute P into that. So dy dx at the point P. 2at squared, 280. And that would be equal to 2 into bracket all over 280. And that's 1 over t. So in effect, our gradient at the point 80 squared 280 is equal to 1 on t. We can substitute that into the equation and we would have y minus 2at to be equal to 1 over t x minus 80 squared. So that's the equation of the tangent to the parabola. Now, this tangent meets the x axis at the point A. So we need to know what would that point be? How would the coordinate of A be? Because we know the equation of the x axis, which is so equation of x axis y equals zero. So our point should have the y coordinate being zero. Now because the two lines meet, the tangent line and the x axis meet at the point A, we can solve these two lines simultaneously to find a point of intersection. 
So doing that, we can solve y equal to 0 into our equation of the tangent. So we have 0 minus 2at equals 1 over t x minus at squared. And we solve for x. So we would have minus 2at squared being equal to x minus at squared. And so x would be minus at squared. So that's the x coordinate of a. We already know the y coordinate because it intersects at the x on the x axis. So our a point a would be minus at squared and zero. All right. Now what's point b? Uh, for space. of space I would have to claim this. Alright, I hope you've gotten that part. So we do the same to find the point B. Now the y axis has equation equation y axis x equals 0. So we will solve the equ equation of the tangents and the equation of the y axis simultaneously to find their point of intersection and that would be the point B. So we would have y minus 2at 1 over t x is 0, so we are left with just at squared. Now, we can cancel t out, so we are left with y minus 2at minus at. That will cancel one of it, so y is equal to uh, at. Okay, so our point B would be 0, 80. We have to find the equation of the locus of the midpoint. Now, what do we mean by locus? The equation of the locus. So, the locus is the path that the points tread. So, we want to find the path that the points tread. So, the midpoint of AB. What path does the midpoint of AB tread? That's what we are interested in. So we have to first of all find the midpoint of AB. Now how do you find the midpoint of AB? It's half sum of the coordinates. So we have um, what are the coordinates of A and B? A has uh, minus A T squared and then B because this plus zero will give you that and then B has A T. So we have that X is equal to minus a t squared on 2 and y is equal to a t on 2. So that would be the locus or the equation of the locus of the midpoint in parametric form because we are interested in the path thread. So as t varies, anytime t changes, 
A time T changes, you see that the values for X and Y also change. So we can leave this as our answer, but if you want, you can um, go on and write it in Cartesian form. All right, thank you.